Hello and welcome to this session, which is entitled Architects and Teachers, the Silent Revolution of Montessori Architecture by architect uh, Benjamin Staley. The words silent intrigue me in this title because revolutions are often very loud and a silent revolution is less noticeable and perhaps therefore more potent. And I don't think I need to tell any of you uh, Montessori, Montessorians uh, about that fact. So I've been working with Benjamin for uh, a number of years now, as well as his fellow architect, Steve Lawrence. Um, and during this project, we visited schools and I learned a lot from them on building designs, but I also learned a lot from the work um, that the teachers, that, that guides have been doing at those school, schools and, um, and how, how well they know their place and the importance of, um, of the physical structure of the, of the space and how that is the foundational component of a prepared environment. So both teachers and um, architects are so important. And what we now see more often is that they work very tightly together when developing new buildings and, and redesigning existing buildings. So we also see that they're inspired by projects elsewhere and, and in different places in the world and use that to their own buildings. So, it is the global community of, of architects and guides that will drive this Montessori architecture initiative forward. And it's also therefore in this session that rather than focusing on the theory, uh, Benjamin will put more emphasis on the people behind uh, architecture and the actual people helping design it and use the theory more in practice. Um, so I will hand over to Benjamin now, but before I do, um, just very quickly, um, the questions can be asked in the chat, the Q&A chat. Uh, I will also put that in the chat, actually. And you can, uh, we, we can hopefully address a few of those questions after the, uh, at the end of the session. Um, but for other questions that may arise later on, you can also visit the, 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 the website and, uh, or email the questions. And we put that information in the chat as well. So, uh, Benjamin, um, happy to hand over to you and really excited to uh, to hear what you're going to say and how uh, the people and the audience can be involved in this initiative. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Boyd, my good old friend. Um, it's a fantastic introduction because I'm, I am grateful. I mean, I'm grateful to be here. I'm grateful um, to be peacefully connected. Um, since it is, in a way, it's, we are living in a very, very strange time right now. At least this is how, how, how I feel. And the whole fact that we are managed to be together, not um, peacefully, across different countries, across different continents, across different backgrounds, it, it deeply touches me. Um, it also touches me because we are apparently we share the same the same passion and the, for for education and, and and obviously architecture. And um, Boyd, you are absolutely right. I had since I have been had the chance to speak now several times about um, the phenomenon on Montessori architecture. I I feel that uh, I would like to do it um, a little bit differently this time. Um, for the next 40 minutes, I, I, I would like to talk a little bit about um, the basic viewing, the procedure and the human beings, as uh, Boyd already pointed out, behind the uh, terminology of uh, Montessori architecture. So talking about architecture, um, allow me to begin with the modernistic understanding of what an architect is. An architect is a person who has a universal view on the human existence. The modernistic architect understands him or herself as some sort of a social engineer with the capacity to draw a clear vision of the built environment, which would ultimately change society in a 
desired direction. The best things about architects is that they know how to make precise plans to go from here to there. On the other hand, the teacher understands, or the classic perception of a teacher, understands her or himself as some sort of social engineer too, with the capacity to draw an understandable vision of what we call knowledge. Her or his main concern is how to impact children so that this boy or that girl would eventually fit into the envisioned society. The best thing about teacher, teachers is that he or that they know how to make study plans to, to go from here to there. In this regard, they are very similar. So it is this school system which produces the next generation of architects and the next generation of teachers. What we have in place is a self-propelling setup in which the basic understanding of people, but particularly children, as some sort of unfinished subject that consequently cannot be fully trusted, produces a particular educational architecture. An architecture which main aim is the social engineering impact on people. This is true when Maria Montessori went to school herself uh, in the 1880s. And unfortunately, it is still true today. So now let's turn to Montessori education. The basic understanding is that children are not some sort of unfinished humans, but beings with an inherent dignity, seen as contractors, constructors of their own intelligence, guided by the inner teacher. It is an education based on the observations of, children, of children's spontaneous activities. Based on this understanding and observations, Montessori did not create plans and tests, but she set but a set of very clever so-called sensorial materials. To be chosen with complete freedom, those sensorial materials promote independence and problem solving in the part of the child alone in pairs or in group, groups. So Steve Lawrence and myself have, argue, have been arguing that the Montessori educational philosophy has a really, really hard time to flourish in the wrong environment and needs a different understanding of what architects as persons or as professions and architecture actually is. But how can such a Montessori architecture actually look like? Very much in analogy to Alexander Muron's wonderful 2018 documentary, Let the Child Be the Guide, we need an architecture freed from our demands and impacts an architecture that therefore is not driven by restrictions, but by choice, and which encourages responsibilities. Montessori architecture is not based on a single-minded vision, but on observations of spontaneous creativity. From those observations, we draw a set of patterns. To be used completely with complete freedom, those architectural patterns promote creativity in finding an independent and personal solution. So now, where would you start, or how and where would you start a revolution? 
one would assume that the shift forwards an other type of architectural perception would come from a place where each child finds the largest number of architects and teachers to choose from. Maybe in America or Europe, where you have actually a choice between different types of architects and approaches. The reason why I show you his picture is that although born and raised in Burkina Faso, the renowned architect Yebebo Kere lives and works in Germany. Together with Kere, you find another 101,000 registered architects in Germany, which means that in average, 806 Germans have to share one architect, including Kere. In the United States, for example, it is 1,300 who have to share an architect. In the Netherlands, where Boyd is sitting right now, uh, it is 1,567 people. In, uh, so now we go all the way up to Africa. <laughs> In Tanzania, for instance, where the Arthur Walser Foundation has been supporting Montessori education it is 70,000 people, which means that around 800 registered architects are responsible for a population of 60 million people. And thanks to colonization, <laughs> all of those 800 registered architects have gone through the same architectural training as their colleagues in Europe or the United States based on the same arrogant understanding of human beings. The result is that it's the same school architecture as you would find in Europe or the United States with an incredible uniformity. Again and again, you will find the same uniform patterns of separated square shaped rooms military organized along straight lines, half around the courtyard, usually with a flagpole in the center to salute. Again, recalling Montessori education, which is characterized by learning by doing and a strong emphasis on independence, freedom within limits, the respect for the nat natural environment, as well as psychological, physical, and social development, this type of prison design architecture quite literally is sabotaging the nature of Montessori architecture. So for the Art of Asa Foundation, who likes to provide funds, allowing its partners in Tanzania, for instance, to build new Montessori kindergartens and schools. For Steve Lawrence and myself, the question was what to do. And of course, we were not the first asking this question. In 1920, the Dutch architect Ad Grimon and Barend van den Neuen Amsel through their vision of an ideal Montessori school. Maria Montessori even commented on it. You can see her writing stating that she finds it aesthetically excellent, especially the supposed subdivision into small places. So in analogy to add to art and parent, our first impulse as architects was to create a set of blueprints of ideal Montessori kindergartens and schools, which could be provided to everyone who wants to build a better learning environment. However, for us, it soon became clear that we would most probably trap into the same 
modernistic trap, which is called arrogance. Also, it would completely diminish the role of local architects and the beauty of spontaneous creativity. So we decided to go the Montessori way from the beginning to the end. As some of you may know, we subsequently went to some of the most inspiring kindergartens and schools in countries such as the Netherlands, in Belgium, the United Kingdom, Burkina Faso, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Tanzania, in order to learn from those examples and to understand Montessori architectural patterns, such as the orientation of the entrance forward to morning sun or the everyday gathering space inside and outside or the connection from the inside to the outside world or the meaningful access to water. In total, we were able to distill 28 such patterns. Those patterns are not hierarchical, some of them are not more important than others, but we brought them into order so they can serve as useful checklist during the design process. In 2019, we eventually compiled all of our findings, the repertoire of references, uh, the descriptions of all of the 28 patterns in a first version of what we pronounced design instrument. In alignment with Montessori materials, the design instrument does not provide copy and paste solutions, but serves as an inspirational checklist for the creation of individual and appropriate learning environments. The first who officially used the design instrument were the ABC architect Doreen Fred in collaboration with the Montessorian Cornelia Wallner. The later runs a small NGO in Tanzania with hospitals and kindergartens and in schools. For a small community in the Maasai and Mero territory in the Kilimanjaro area, Doreen designed a governmental Montessori kindergarten and school using the design instrument. What is immediately apparent is how different the plans look in contrast to what we saw a little bit earlier. There are no more isolated classrooms, an articulation of a variety of places and the freedom of movement, including the freedom to hide from the teacher behind the corner. A topographical experience with free but meaningful access to water points, other types of facilities and gardens. The use of indigenous material or the orientation of the entrance forward to morning sun so that when the child approaches the school in the morning, it approaches a building reflecting the first light of the day. It will step into the school with a positive energy. Just to name a few of the recognizable patterns. The construction started in spring 2021 and should be finished this summer. The second team which tried the design instrument were two Tanzanian architects, uh, the names is Adrian Chan on the left and Elina Musa on the right. In collaboration with the Montessorian Sister Gaspara Kashamba, they designed a congregational Montessori school in the central Tanga region. Although the plan of this school looks very different 
to the first example, it's easy to recognize the same architectural patterns. It's a beautiful topographical experience indicated through the various steps, which helps in the articulation of a variety of places and islands of concentration. There are no isolated classrooms either. And the layout provides choices with independent access to water, toilets, kitchen, and the children's garden. Together with Sister Gaspara, the two architects from Dar es Salaam developed a whole Montessori campus with the help of the design instrument. The construction of the primary school building started in late summer 2021 and should be finished this autumn. The next architect who grabbed the Montessori architecture design instrument was Victoria Marva, together with Montessori teachers of the Ushikara Vanema congregation in Moshi, they developed their interpretation of a Montessori learning environment for the town of Ifakara in the Morogoro region of Tanzania. Once again, you will find the same inspirational patterns as in the other two projects. Here, for instance, the offer of seclusion and respect of concentrated activities. These ladies too developed a whole Montessori campus for Ifakara. Groundbreaking of the first school building is planned for this summer. The example of those pioneering architects and teachers took roots by the end of last year. Together with these pioneers, we organized workshops for Montessori teachers and local architects in five different towns in Tanzania. The mutual engaging involvement of the participants was inspiring and many Montessori educators formed new collaborations with local architects. Today, Tanzania has a network of around 30 Montessori architects inspired by the prospect of a new architectural approach. Due to this, we just launched a new initiative where we, invited, where we invited those creative men and women to submit their design proposals for new Montessori children houses, tailored for different geographical areas in Tanzania. Organized into different geographical zones, the idea is to showcase those proposals on a special website later the year, in this year. So Montessori educators from Tanzania, in this case, can choose design inspiration, the design inspirations they really like, and can go then in contact with the architects of their choice. Although the initiative has literally just started, we are all already blown away by the commitment and creative spontaneity of local architects and their ideas. The silent revolution that is happening in Tanzania, we like to see globally. So to initiate a constant reply on observations, distilling and composing of new Montessori environments. So if you are now here watching, for instance, an educator, teacher, principal, read the design instrument and ask your architects to use it. You will find all the information for free on the website montessoriarchitecture.org. There you get access to the descriptions of all of the 28 patterns, a worldwide growing repertoire of beautiful kindergartens and schools, with photographs and plans, 
Yeah. <laughs> For those who, who appreciate the tactile quality of a real book, beautifully designed by Nadine Wüthrich, Montessori architecture, a design instrument, is ready for pre-order now. For those who have already pre-ordered it and wondering where the book is, your book will be delivered this autumn. If you are an architect and you recognize the same patterns in your plans, please, please send us your design proposals so that we can showcase them in our repertoire part. Yeah, that's it. Thank you very, very much for, uh, for, for you listening. Um, I think I will now stop sharing the screen so we can maybe open up and uh, maybe respond to some of the questions. <laughs>